Greetings, everybody. Welcome to the round table. Scrawny, Maniac, and Anders to take you guys through another Counter-Strike 2022 topic, and that is which team has been built this year to succeed? Which team dethrones not the important. That, oh. Yeah, that has to be the preface of this conversation. But right? we are trying to challenge the status quo. Yeah, that's what we're doing. Yeah, because Navi is the up there, and I think Navi is going to stay on the throne for a long time. Okay. Gambit is right behind, and I think they're going to be strong this year. We are trying to challenge the status quo. That's what we're doing. Yeah, we're also talking about two teams that you know didn't make changes. So Absolutely. that 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 is its own thing. That is the con- the continuation of 2022. Are Navi and Gambit? For that reason, we're not probably going to talk about them too much. Uh, everything else in Counter Strike seems to have changed. Uh, I'm going to go first. I'm going to put forth the team that I think uh, has been built to succeed. Now, I think it's very tempting to go down the G2 road just because they were Navi's challenger. They picked up Monacy. They've got Nico, top three player, arguably top two of 2021. Let's not do that, please. And uh, you got to poke it. Uh, However, Vitality. Vitality is the team that I believe has been built to succeed because we are talking about a team that is bringing in arguably the most impactful and important coach of CSGO history with, of course, Magisk and Dupree, versatile players, tons of achievements under their belts, tons of different roles underneath their belts, uh, and then this success story that was as well the Vitality Trio. So you've got, you've got two big competitors uh, merging together. This is a roster that was not built to be within top 10. This is a roster that was built to succeed and to win events and presumably by extension of that, mm. continuously upset versus Navi. Now, can they do it? There's a ton of barriers. There's a ton of barriers in the way, right? We've never seen French Counter-Strike merge with anything else. We've never seen Danes play with 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 Frenchmen. Uh, we also haven't seen the best of Astralis in this last couple of years. So is this, you know, injection into Vitality a net positive? Or is it going to take too long to kind of get the ball rolling that the project falls through? I don't know. But I do love this thought that we now have this trio of Astralis players added with Zywoo. Throw in Apex, who looks, you know, freaking better and more impactful than ever uh, in, in, in his new role and in his leadership. Seems very comfortable in his own mm. skin at the time. I think this is the team that's really kind of, you know, meant to do it. I, tr- I've tr- I, have this, I have this thing that I try to always think about when I think about any team. And that is, I think, firstly, it's, v- it's really, really hard to get five or six people to all point in the same direction and have the same goals. I just think that is is unbelievably difficult to do. And it's not talked about nearly enough. And I don't, there's probably a lot of theories behind how to do that. I mean, Vitality, we saw them doing team building type stuff, you know. Yeah, and they, they uh, definitely will, yeah. Yeah. They were skiing, I think. They were skiing, they were doing like, like so, so there's, in the there's, mountains. Yeah, there's all this stuff, right? But but that's just, that's sort of socially. Then there's sort of a, do we all have the same idea about, you know, do you want to be top one or top three or like, and when? That's the other big question that yeah, I think teams true. routinely mm-hmm. fail when. at or don't even consider at all, right? Yeah. Because if you build a lineup that is going to try and win the last major of the year, let's say, then that is a different pressure than if you try and win the first one. And it, it will feel different. The weight on every game that you play, every you know different tournament, is just going to be, the closer the, the, the success goal is, the harder you're going to feel the pressure. Mm-hmm. Anytime something screws up, you're not going to think, oh, we have a lot of time to fix it. Don't worry, we, you have some trouble, but we can fix it. You're going to think, well, we only have really like three months to do this and we need, it needs to be now. So I, obviously from the outside, don't necessarily know how this plays out. I reckon that hopefully the, this is a conversation they had before joining Vitality, the, the, the Astralis part <laughs> Hopefully of it. Hopefully they can see Yeah, because I think if you, it's, I actually think it's a, this is one of the things that worries me a little bit about the project. It's just if they come in with like too much hype and too much like we've spent all this money, we've got everyone, this is the super team, this we're going to do it right now. Yeah, it, I know. That's, a, that's really tricky. Um, but I, I mean, so I think those are like two factors that we don't talk about really enough. And if you want to build a super team for 2022, that has to be like an, Everyone has to have a roadmap in their brains about like when are we going to do this and like what's the timeline for success here. Do you think that Vitality is one of those teams that should expect the immediate success? Because again, I want to, I want everybody to just recall the fact that they went on this crazy run at the end of the year as a dead roster, mm-hmm. right? Like once we knew this change was coming, and then we got the best results out of Vitality, what felt like for for a year at the very end, and then they fizzled out. Like the, if you know, if anything, we're talking about expectations. Talk about setting them higher. I know. You know, that that last run as the fully French team, 
that's got to raise the pressure in terms of the Danish guys coming in and immediately getting those results as well. I think they have. I think they have the pieces to be very quickly performant as sure. a team. I, I do believe that. Um, there is a name. There's there's a guy I want to put under the microscope for a second here. It's it's Apex because you mentioned him quickly. You said you no, know, he was looking better and better towards the years of 2021. He was being more impactful as a player and he was feeling great. Um, now. He has an IGL because he he was not an IGL from from birth right from birth right he he kind of molded himself into that role he had to do it in Vitality and now he truly feels like a leader he has grown into that role and I think he's doing an amazing job now but this is such a different environment that he has to play in within now right he has someone he has a trio coming in from Australia a trio that has been winning for many 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 years yeah I'm hoping that they will see eye to eye on how they want to play Counter Strike because otherwise he might feel himself very much at odds with what's happening on the server. But the flip side of that, and what I really like about that move, is a conversation we actually had with Apex together a couple of times, that when you bring in players like Dupree and Majisk, during rounds, the amount of solutions and information they will provide you is something that is invaluable for an, an IGL. And I know it's something that sometimes was missing Apex with the previous lineup. Someone that's able to tell you at the beginning of the round, listen, on my position, this is what they're doing, then this is how we win a round. That's a skill in Counter-Strike that not a lot of people have, being able to transfer that information to the IGL. Say, listen, they always smoke at 115. I think if we do a contact play right now, it can work. Dupree and Majisk will provide him these Those solutions. Kinds of and I think that you can use instantly. You can use that tomorrow. I actually want. wonder on some level, even if there's some things that, let's say there's a bunch of things that, about how you think about the game and how you think about how to solve certain sort of you know, problems within a certain round, like how do we do a, a retake on the B-bomb side if we're a man down, if we really need to. Uh, like there's lots of like a million things like that. I'm sure there's lots of that that you just, that's just natural to you. And it's only when you say it out loud to someone in a new team that's never thought that way before. And they mm. say, that's how you think, yeah, that's how you think about that. And then it becomes interesting. And like a lot of new stuff is generated that I'm assuming, like obviously you have a strategy book and like certain very hard things that you can sort of bring and say, this is what we could do. But I think there's a lot of unintended sort of side effects of that that could be really interesting. It's it could problem be hard. solving, yeah. Yeah, problem solving. And you know, you have your system for problem solving and now someone else comes in with theirs and I think it's going to be fun. I I think G2, oh sorry, I think Vitality is, is an interesting thing. I think G2 is... Too, That's the pick you make? Yes, Who, who is, is built to succeed this year? You're going with G2. Yeah, because I... I I know, and on some level, the whole who's the best player of like 2021 discussion is kind of stupid, and like it is, it, it is. <laughs> what do you mean? It is boiling everything <laughs> down to like you know just a, a rank essentially. But I, in my heart, Nico is on, in second spot. Like it's, sure. I just have to, I have to say that, and it's not like a, it's not a slight against Saiwu, who obviously I think you know look going by the numbers and the tournaments and everything else, but I just think Nico's. I, like, I, I'm blown away in, in a different way when I watch Nico play. I think that's probably what does it for me. And I, I really think, like, he, we, it would have been a crime against Counter-Strike if Symbol had never won a major, and now he did. And, uh, and, and how long it took. And how long <laughs> it took. It took. Long yeah, time. yeah, yeah. And, and I think it, on a similar scale, if Nico doesn't find a way to do this somehow, uh -huh. like, it's going to be on a similar scale for me, at least. Yeah, so I take. think this is, yeah, G2 is it for me to be the the, the really lethal team that's going to be real hard to stop. I feel like you cannot, I feel like you cannot challenge that statement. Like, the, it's the, a, no, no, no. the potential and the talent and the yeah. skill in G2 is absolutely immaculate. It's insane. I just feel like they are a bit more moving pieces and questions that that's sure. the case with Vitality, right? We, we bring in Alexi yeah. B a new in-game leader that has to work with new players, new ideas, new systems. You bring in Monacy, which is going to yeah. have to make the jump from the Wii plays and the Academy Leagues of the World to now the Tier 1. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Everyone agrees that he's obviously a monster, but yes. can he instantly do it? Then you have Jax, who's going to have maybe to move around, leave some space. A lot of questions. Yep. But oh, yes. it, there is the sentiment no. is that if things click, it's, that's it. Yeah, yeah, like yeah. They actually they, they go against Navi yeah. and they make it a best of Wait, five. Wait, hold on. Just, on. just on that front too. I do. I know we, we're sort of none of us are picking Navi because that doesn't really make any sense. But just to, I still just we have to cement that this isn't. That I think the how far Navi are ahead in terms yeah. of like oh, it's, it's just so ridiculous. I think like, it's it is just so right stupid. It's, yeah, 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 but I think even then it's like I just for me it really does feel like they almost cheated in in finding bit. Like it's <laughs> it's almost yeah. too much. Like it's it's just so stupid. So yeah. and also amazing. I mean, I think it, it actually sets up the story of twenty twenty two in the most incredible way possible. Because this is not just a question of like 
oh, let's try and see if we can unseat Navi. It's like this team is so ridiculously yeah. overpowered already yeah. <laughs> What's... that uh, it's, it's going to be uh, very hard for anyone. And the thing is, too, if Navi didn't have Simple, they would have Monacy. You know what I mean? Like, if G2 is yeah. their biggest competitor, let's say, for argument's sake, like, that's Navi kind of letting him slide by, right? And we know that during the negotiations of the contract, there was supposed to be this clause of, like, a potential buyback. Like, yeah, yeah you can you can buy him, but at any point, we're just going to yoink him out. You know, if you beat <laughs> us in three events consecutively, we take him back or some yeah. kind of clause. I, I think, I, I do agree, where it's like, G2, you know, they've got what could be this amazing, amazing formula. Um... The reason I pick Vitality is because I was just looking at like less barriers of entry. And you talked yeah. about it, right? There are less the barriers of entry. Success that could if happen. we needed somebody now to kind of put their foot forth for international CS, it should be Vitality. If we're talking about towards the end of the year in that second major, if somebody, just because, again, there are more things that need to play catch up in Alexi B getting back to top competition, Monacy proving that he can truly do this against, you know, even, the, even that's not a huge question, but it's still one that needs to be answered. Well, sure. Um, and, and so I'm willing to give G2 more time, but I'm putting Vitality forward. And we haven't really touched on phase. No, we, I we want that mention. You, look, you, you say time, and that, that ties back to the Navi argument you were just making. People need to realize that right now, a lot of teams are rebuilding their yes. game plan. They're either adding new players or players with an S. We talk about trios of Astralis going into Vitality, G2 phase, all of these teams we've mentioned, all Wrestle Shuffles, trying to figure out how they want to play Counter-Strike. At that time, Navi, they're just... <laughs> playing their own game and they're just furthering it. And so this is where you can actually, if you have the right mentality, which I do believe they have and they have the right ethic and the right way to think about the game, they can, they have people looking at them and they are looking towards the future. So yeah. they are always one step ahead. Yeah. That's what Astralis used to do when they were, you know, so dominant is that you would think you had figured them out, but the next tournament they had something new and yeah. you were ready to beat them, but that was just their V1. Now they're in V2, V3, V4. That's what Navi can do now. Everyone is trying to rebuild their perfect arsenal to take them down. Now we already have the recipe for success. They just have to keep furthering keep it, going. keep improving it, yep. maintain your focus, maintain the carrot in front of the horse to keep going even though you're on top. If they do that, they're going to be so far ahead. I don't see them losing the number one spot. Let's take that exact type of mentality, right? That, that sticking to your formula is in its own a way for Navi to continue you know, moving their, their war horse forward. Uh, we, we kind of mentioned all these new international rosters that could have incredibly high ceilings or whatever. But if we look at, again, you know, these six teams, the three international rosters of G2, FaZe, um, Vitality. Vitality. Vitality, excuse yeah. me. Oof. G2, FaZe, a lot of Counter-Strike. G2, FaZe, and Vitality on one side, right? If we look at Navi, who are at the top and are kind of like the kingpins to be questioned, um, I know that this question was sort of which teams have been built to succeed this year, but I think in a way, not changing pieces is also building into something. Like you're talking about, you're continuing on from what you have. We look at Gambit, we look at Heroic. Those are two teams that, like Navi, have not changed their formula, have not changed their roster. They're taking what they did in 2021 and trying to improve on it. Can they also join Navi at the top by continuing with what they have while these other three international teams are in a rebuilding, restructuring, and improving phase, where do, where do you guys land when it comes to the Gambit heroic, you know, hype trains? Oh, they're just, funnily enough, they're also just such different teams, like from, yep. from how they approach the game, right? Um, to me, if heroic are just feel much more like a momentum based team, like it feels like for heroic to win, let's say, a major, would it would have to be like this sort of incredible, just high, just, you know, going from one game to the next, like just all the time mm -hmm. riding the wave all the way. Down. And that's generally, I think, a very, very hard thing to make work. Like the chance that this is the problem, right? Like with I know. beating Navi in one random game is one thing, but but consistently winning throughout a tournament, riding that high is just very hard. Um, that's something that Heroic, I think, will have to work on a lot more to, to try and build into the game like find a way to say even when things are really screwing up badly or there's, a, there's a way to, to, to return to basics yeah I, I don't they think don't they have, have that same no. and yeah. Gambit is essentially all basics which is what makes them so unbelievably uh, rigid like they're such a stable team in that sense um, I realized that they had that one game at the major at the end the semi-final that was that was you know Blew out, yeah. that wasn't what we all expected but generally speaking I think mean, they have a very strong formula, a very strong core. It's just you wonder if that builds high enough. Like it, you wonder if that system I know is, what you mean. is can actually take out Navi. You know, yeah. I I really feel like the letdown that we have seen from Gambit 
if you compare the second half of 2021 with the first half, I'm not going to argue that there wasn't a letdown. Of course there was. Oh, the, they, yeah. In 2021, at some point, they were unbeatable. And we no knew one it was coming, right? It's the return to land. Exactly. That yeah. Return yeah. to land, I am Cologne. All the pressure was stacked upon them, and they did okay, but they obviously did not perform to the, high, the same highest uh, standards that they had. But I do believe that because they remained unshadowed, they stayed together, they learned from these mistakes, they grew up, they went better. I think they're even more dangerous this year, honestly. Just yes. the fact that they have survived yep. these hiccups, right? They have been let down. They have let themselves down. They've disappointed themselves and the fans. They stuck together. What do they do in 2022? They go back to their recipe. They play sub-tournaments. They go to France Park. They destroy everyone. They win. They build their confidence again. So, honestly, for me, Gambit is going to be a conversation. And I think any time they're going to face Navi, it's going to get tighter and tighter and tighter. Yep. I, I like that you brought it there because that's kind of where my mind's at. And in bringing these two teams up... You know, I, I bring them both up because they're in similar boats. You mentioned it perfectly. Very different formulas. I'm right there with you. I think that if Navi are going to continue to put distance between them and the rest of the pack, that Gambit are just following yeah, in their footsteps. So and as they follow in those footsteps, they're going to get pushed into the mud by Navi more and more every once in a while. But, you know, with every loss comes a chance to learn. Uh, with every chance to learn comes a chance to improve, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, and we can get a really nice head-to-head -head throughout this year. My question is still on Heroic. Again, you know, do they need more basics in order to fall back on, right? And again, if you then make a change, let's say, theoretically halfway through the year, now you're throwing yourself into that pack of teams that have changed their formula, yeah. but you're now playing catch-up behind them because you didn't make it coming into the year. So, you so know, I, I think wanted. Heroic's kind of on like a glass platform that if it never shatters, is going to hold them above everybody else. But if somehow that cracks, they're going to fall down into the depths. And we've got we've got Gambit, with Enders, you know, yeah. standing up there. It's a bit too momentum based on the side of yep. Heroic for me to tell you right now that at any tournament they can yeah. have success. I mean, I know when they catch on fire, of course, man, yeah. they can go and they're gonna make a series against Navi very competitive. Yep. But yeah. they can also just flop. I mean, they almost had that at the major, right? Like barring losing to G two in the semifinals, you know, and and then we know that G two could even push Navi towards the end, uh, just because of Nico's individual performance. Like, you know, Heroic, if if everything comes together at the start of an event, huge threat. We started talking about timescales for success, and I think in my book, I put FaZe as one of those teams that I would expect to have a, a longer sense of it. I think I think Vitality have, I think almost as a side effect of how big this change is, have put themselves in a position where they need to succeed pretty early on before yeah. people... I think, I think from my point of view, FaZe is an, in an exciting spot for, for this reason that I think they could take a long time to build, but have a really powerful sort of middle end to year uh, effect. Sure. Um, so I think that's a, that's like a, a bit of a sleeper in terms of who could really make it high to the top, I think, um, because of the rocks change and, and everything else. I, again, I feel like FaZe always kind of gets gets a nod. And and that's yeah. that's where, you know, that's where I think it's... Uh, it's now it, or never. Huh? Yeah, it's now or never. And, and well, now it's over. So this is it. Uh, which international rosters were built to succeed? Vitality, G2, and G2. officially... G2 as well. Phase under the radar. Uh, we'll see what happens, folks.